since you came into my life Gave me back the paradise You helped me find the reason why
to say Secret from Madonna, and we're in Paris having a chat with Madonna. You can hear the whole of this conversation uh, on October the 24th, which is when the album comes out. But good morning, Madonna. Good morning. Uh, is it just coincidence that we're in Paris and it's Fashion Week and all your promotional work for the single and album is in Fashion Week? It was just, is that just a happy coincidence? Um, well, I knew that I had to come here in October because my album was coming out, but I, I sort of on purposely... <laughs> Um, maneuvered it so that I would be here during Fashion Week so I could catch a few of the shows. And what have you seen? I mean, what, what should we well, I haven't be seen anything yet, but right. um, I want to go to the um, Galliano show and I want to go to um, the Gautier show, of course. And do you tend to buy in blitzes or just a little bit of that and a little bit of this? Or? Buy? Oh, I don't go or to buy. Or? Oh, I don't go to buy the clothes. Oh, I they give you the stuff. Of course, oh, sorry. <laughs> well, no, no, no. That's not always the case, but... Um, I mean, this, the fashion shows themselves are kind of like theater. You know, it's, it's entertainment. That's really why I go. Sure. And, and I love the clothes. Sure. Uh, Secret, I thought, was um, a love song. And I'm wrong, aren't I? No, you're absolutely right. It's what? a love song. It's whatever you want it to be. Well, I'm just holding this piece of paper in, it in front of me that tells me that it's, it's spiritual philosophy. So I just wondered if I just picked up completely the well, wrong end of the stick. No, it, it's, it's, um, it's that too. Um, I think that that was taken from some other interview that I, I did with somebody. Sli it's slightly out of context. What, what I mean it to be is that it, it, it could be interpreted as a love song, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's good, but it's also um, a bit of a, a spiritual awakening. Maybe that's a better way to in describe it. In you or it. in people in general? In me, mm -hmm. me, of course, but I think that um, that there are some lines in it that could apply to everyone, such as happiness lies in your own hand. I think that most people could relate to that, the, the truth of that. The okay. simple truth of that. The LP comes out in a couple of weeks' time in the UK. I've heard it. Uh, everyone listening hasn't. Uh, it strikes me as a more grown-up album, would you say? It's the kind of album you make when you're 36 rather than 20? Um, well, I don't know if age has anything to do with it. Um, it's just my state of mind right now. 
I don't know. I, I'm sure there are lots of people who think I'm completely immature, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I would rather not classify it as mm. grown up or not grown up. It's just um, maybe it's more introspective. I, I would I would describe it as more romantic. That that seems better to me. Okay, uh, you've had 37 single hits in the UK. Yeah. You are the most successful top 10 artist ever in the UK. And I just wondered if you follow chart positions at all. I mean, you're big in Europe. Here we are in, in Paris, huge in the States. Does it matter to be successful in the UK? Or is it just as important as France or Germany or wherever? I think it's important to be successful everywhere. Um, I think that England is... is um, you don't have to be diplomatic. No, I'm not, but I think historically England is a place where a, a lot of really great music has originated from. So um, I would say that it, it, it probably means more to me if my record does well in, in a country like England versus countries I would not like to name right now. <laughs> no, okay, no, no, no. Istanbul, for instance. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> You're not big in Istanbul. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll look forward to the album. The album comes out on October the 24th, and uh, you can hear me in conversation in greater detail uh, on Monday, October the 24th, the day it's released in this country. Uh, right now, this is Secret. This is Madonna. Thanks for talking. You're welcome. That's Secret from Madonna. That was the sound of the ashtray moving. Now, that's very good. And here we are in Paris, and it's great to come to Paris, and it's a lovely day, but it does strike me, it's quite interesting that we haven't seen you in the UK for quite a long time. We come to Paris to do the interviews, which is great for us, and you come to do the tours and so on, but you don't hang out in the UK. Well, it's a little bit difficult for me to hang out in the UK. It, no, it's extremely difficult. Why is that? Well... It doesn't, I mean, there, there are, you know, loads of people outside my hotels everywhere in, in Europe generally, but that's not really the thing. I, ju I just, I can't, um, oh, how can I say this and sound very diplomatic? <laughs> I guess I really have to be in a strong state of mind to deal with the press. Uh, I thought that's, I thought and, that's what uh, we were going to get to. Yeah. Not that I'm feeling particularly weak or anything. I just, I find that the press there is... Um, 99% of the time extremely negative and mm -hmm. I would rather not I'd rather not have to deal with it I would rather surround myself with positive energy um, and I don't by the way think that all, what all the tabloids say is necessarily a reflection of, of people there I, I know that they do it to sell magazines and newspapers no, we're just and burdened stuff. with that kind of press I'm afraid yeah but it's it's it, you know it kind of unconsciously has an effect on you you know, after a mm, while, it's just sure. so, you can't help but think that it's, you know, the sentiment of everyone, mm. because it's in every newspaper, and it's relentless, and it's always really negative, and I'd just rather not deal sure. with it. No, that's fine. I thought I thought it was going to be a price yeah. answer. But. But, which is kind of disappointing, because I do like London. I, I would like to be able to go there and play, you know, have some fun. Mm. So. Uh, the album's out today, Bedtime Stories. If anyone else put out an album called Bedtime Stories, mm. they'd think, oh, it's kind of a cosy album with nursery songs and so on. But because it's Madonna's Bedtime Stories, mm -hmm. we kind of think it's going to be a raunchy album, but it's not, is it? It's, no, it's in fact, more of it a is kind a, of a low-key romantic album. It is. It, it is, in fact, a cosy album. With Well, I, the reason I actually called it that, in addition to the, the fact that it's the, um, the name of the song that Bjork and Nellie Hooper wrote for me, um, I did think that a lot of the songs on the album had a lullaby-ish quality to them. So to me, I thought it was appropriate that it, it was called that. Okay. You've said to me before, you don't think that the album is a product of the fact of the age that you are as opposed to the music that you made when you were uh, 10 years younger. But I just wondered if there was any bedtime story angle, you know, reading st stories to kids, whether there's any kind of... I mean, you have said, for example, when you're 40, you can imagine yourself having three kids. And Yes, that statement, I shall never live down. Um, <laughs> well... I think I, as an adult, I like to be read bedtime stories or told bedtime stories. It's something that, that, and I like reading stories to people. So I don't think, once again, that has. What stories to do. do you read, or what stories would you like to be read? Um, I would like, I would like to be read poetry, actually. By Pablo Neruda, that's my favorite poet. You don't know any of his off the top of your head, do you? Um, not, um, <laughs> not by heart. No, <laughs> I haven't memorized them. They're very beautiful. 
Okay. Uh, we're going to play um, another track now from, from the album called Survival. What's the story behind this? It's a response to the world, really. And, you know, over the past few years, I've been um, taken to task for certain things, like, you know, my last LP and my, in the book that I put out. And I just, and people have really tried to, I think they have overanalyzed and over scrutinized everything. And, and it's kind of my response. And okay. On, on the album, on the credits towards the end, you, you dedicate the album to the people who sort of kept you sane, mm. basically. I mean, was there a time when you were sort of worried about going crazy about all the, uh, the no, I only mean going? that in a, in a kind of, you know, I have days where I feel like ripping my hair out, but not, not, you know, Francis Farmer kind of days. I mean, not anything more than that. No. Okay. This is uh, Madonna and this is survival. Survival from Madonna, uh, this is 1FM, and uh, the album is out today. The album is Bedtime Stories, and uh, you were talking about the lyrics on the songs. Mm. And uh, here are some lines from, from Human Nature, one of the, the standout tracks on the album. I mean, you're familiar with them, but no one else will be, so I'm not reading them out for you. Uh, you punished me for telling you my fantasies. I'm breaking all the rules I didn't make. You took my words and made a trap for silly fools. You held me down and tried to make me break. Is, is this specifically about the... The sex book and all the, well, the grief. Well, what, that you what got human nature is is the um, well. What survival is is the the listener friendly version of human nature. It's it's actually the same kind of message. It's just more um, biting and graphic and to the point and humorous. I think, yeah. But it's kind of the same thing. We had um, Naomi Campbell on the program a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, I asked her about the book, and she said she didn't regret doing it at all. The only thing that she regretted was that she upset her parents or upset her mum. But apart from that, she was fine with the book. Mm -hmm. Did you upset anyone? Do you have any regrets about doing the book? I have no regrets, and I'm, I don't know, I mean, I don't know people personally that I upset. So. Right, that's what I meant. Did you upset anyone who was close to you, you know, no. as Naomi had? Mm -mm. No. Would you have done anything looking back in a different way? No. It's a very self-confident statement. Because very few people could actually say, hey, I'm happy with the way things are. Well... I don't think that, I think regret is a waste of time. I think you could say, well, um, maybe I made a mistake here or there, but I think you learn from your mistakes. I think it's one thing to say I made a mistake, but it's another thing to say that I regret because mm. um, I actually learn more from my mistakes than my, my, my victories, so to speak. Okay, I'm going to have to rephrase this next question, but do you wish it had happened another way then, in as much as the erotica album and the book all came, it all came out together do you think the album got a bit lost in all the hoo-ha over yeah, the book yeah absolutely absolutely i'm not sure what would have been a better uh, idea to release the book first and then the album much later or the other way around i don't know but it's already happened so. mm. we were talking about survival and in the last couple of interviews that i've read with you uh, one person princess diana keeps cropping up uh, I don't know <laughs> oh, who started a, a this Oh, in face thing. interview? Okay. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I just wonder whether you have a degree of empathy at all with with Princess Di. Definitely. That, that, and I don't know. It's, um, every time I do an uh, interview with a British journalist, they, that, that name does come up. Because um, she's also, I think, really picked on by the media. And um, I She has used the media as well, though, quite effectively. She has, well. I'm not, I don't really... I'm not really up on everything. I just, I guess what I see is what filters over to America. And, and um, wow, I wouldn't want to be her. <laughs> Looking at the tracks on the album, we've already established that it's a romantic uh -huh. album. Um, are any of the songs aimed at anyone in particular or different people in general? I'm not asking for any British tabloid kind of details. I'm right. just wondering if there's anyone in particular or a group of people. Well, like I said, I you know, human nature is basically aimed at all the people who. It's, it, for, it's for me. It's like my final statement, the the kind of closing the book on the last two years of my life, and think, okay, enough already about the sex book and this and that, and leave me alone about that. And I would like to get on with my life. So that's aimed at that group of people, mm -hmm. and um, specifically um, inside of me, I I wrote about my mother and. Everything else is kind of written about lots of bits and pieces of lots of people I know, so not one person in particular. No one in general. So Don't Stop, which we're going to play now, is this just, uh, just a groove? Yeah, absolutely. 
No one in particular. You don't want to groove with anyone in particular, just... Well, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't write it about anyone in particular. Okay. That's Like a Prayer, and uh, this is Simon Mayo on 1FM in the Ritz in Paris. Thank you very much. You've had to come to Paris to talk to Madonna, which is great by me. Bedtime Stories is out today. Like a Prayer, one of your huge hit singles in the UK. And one of those songs that you can't listen to without seeing the pictures from the video. Mm. A lot of religious imagery that you use then and have used consistently all the way through your career. One of the most intriguing quotes I've ever seen attributed to you and may all be complete fabrication or taken out of context was that you enjoyed or you liked to wear a crucifix because you thought it was sexy to have a naked man around your neck. Mm -hmm. is, yeah. uh, is One of my more provocative statements. <laughs> surely not, surely not. Do you still enjoy using religious imagery? Is it still there? I mean, you've already mentioned that the single, for example, has a kind of a spiritual awakening. Yeah, there's a little bit of um, religious imagery in um, the, the video for Secret. But uh, yes, I'm very fascinated and inspired by, by all religions because all religions have their own kind of basic, simple truths which you can apply to your life. I mean, I'm interested in, I'm as interested in Catholicism as I am in Buddhism or Hinduism or you know, mm -hmm. uh, religions in general fascinate me. We had um, a poll published in the UK a few weeks back, mm -hmm. which Radio 1 actually commissioned. And we asked people in the 18 to 35 age bracket uh, who they would trust the most to come up with uh, a new set of commandments for the 90s, and I'm sorry to have to break it to you, but you came bottom of the poll. You got 1% <laughs> of people who, who said Madonna, and uh, Mother Teresa was top and you were bottom. I'm sorry to have to break it to you like that, but I just wondered, for the people who did say, the 1% of people who did say Madonna, mm -hmm. what are the rules that you would live your life by? You know, Do you have any kind of commandments that you live by? I don't mean necessarily in the religious sense at all, just mm. kind of what rules does Madonna live her life by? I guess... I would say at least a handful, which mm, aren't really that unconventional, which would be to do unto others as you would have them do unto you, um, to be true to yourself, to not be afraid to ask you know, for what you want, to take responsibility for your life, and to look inside of yourself for happiness. I mean, you know, that all sounds rather... Basic, no, 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 no. Oh, it's just for the one percent of people. Then it's important to know. You know, they said Madonna, so I want to know what Madonna mm. thinks about that. So that's great. The um, one of the last times you were on Radio One, in fact, the only time I think you've been live on Radio One was a concert that you did from Wembley Stadium. Huh? I'm not quite sure what the background story was here, but it did produce this live concert. Produced what I'm told was the most condensed period of swearing ever broadcast in the UK. I think there were. 16 F words in four minutes or something. Mm -hmm. And I think it was because you'd been told not to. I, mm -hmm. I, I suspect that's what... I suspect that's probably what happened too. That's generally what I do. <laughs> when told not to. Yes. And having seen the David Letterman interview, uh -huh. I, I just suspect if, if someone says, no, make sure you don't do that, please. Mm -hmm. that's, that's like red rag to a bull. Well, I generally, when someone tells me that I can't say a word, I generally am trying to make a point, which mm -hmm. is words are words. And a word like the F word is something that has really become a, the fabric of our lives. I mean, everybody uses it and it actually has nothing to do with the sexual connotation. It's, it's a word of exclamation. It can mean a lot of really great things. And I think it's ludicrous for people to... to spend so much time worrying about a word. I mean, people should be much more worried about their actions and the way they behave than, than a word. It's like, to me, it's a waste of time with semantics. And, and actually, I, I think it's a really expressive word. And, and I don't see why everyone has to make such a big deal about it. So I'm generally trying to make a point in that direction. Mm -hmm. Let's play another track from the album. This is going to be uh, Inside of Me. And this is about your mum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why did it take so many albums before you got to this song, do you think? Oh, I, I've written about my mother in many, many, many songs. But this particular song, do you think? I don't know. It just came out that way. <laughs> okay. Uh, from the brand new album, which is out today, Bedtime Stories, this is Madonna and Inside of Me. 
That's Inside of Me from Bedtime Stories, the brand new album by Madonna. I've read some really good stuff from you about your love of the program, Absolutely Fabulous, mm. um, which is a huge series in the UK, obviously, mm -hmm. and now catching on in America. How did you get into that? My friend Alec Kashishian turned me on to it. He's obsessed with them. And uh, that's that's how he gave did it. Me. Did the humour translate then to America? Oh, I think they're hysterical. Yeah, I, I hear they're going to be here this week, so I hope I get to meet them. And and is it true that you want to be in the next series? Oh, I never said that. I don't know where that came from, but it'd be fun, I think. So, so you wouldn't say no? That'd be really good. <laughs> yeah, I think they're brilliant. The whole acting thing, is that um, on freeze frame for the moment? Is that on hold while you sort of... Because I, I know you... You, you, you have also said that you'd love to be a director. I mean, that mm. that's the kind of ultimate control position. Uh, well, it's not it's movie. it's not because I want to be in control that I want to be a director. It's just that if you think about what I what I do, which is write songs and I put together, you know, and I I and I perform on stage and I put together the um, stories from my videos. If you translate that to film. It's much harder to have an idea and a dream realized if you're an actor or an actress in a movie because the director is the person that has the dream and mm -hmm. the director is the person with the point of view. Um, and actually that's the position that I feel more comfortable in simply because I have so many ideas and um, it's so hard to get your point of view across if you are an actress, you have to be kind of like a vessel, you know, that is moved around. Mm. Like it's just in, in the radio, uh, sorry, in the uh, the record business, right. so you obviously have complete control. When it comes to a video, you have complete control. Right. When it comes to a movie, you don't really, unless yeah. you're... Well, it's, it's my point of view. It's, it's my statement. It's my idea. It starts as a kernel of an idea in my head. And, and, you know, I'll write a song about it. And then I'll write the treatment for the video about it. And then when I'm on stage performing, I'll, you know, decide how I want to express sure. myself. And um, I can see, I have a lot of ideas for film. Um, I think that I need to spend more time on the set of movies watching directors in, you know, and acting in movies to to really feel that I am ready to do something like that. I don't see myself directing a movie, for instance, in the next year or so. How about directing a Hollywood version of Absolutely Fabulous as a movie, and you can star in it? You could be one of the characters, perhaps, and actually direct it. Would that be fun? It would be fun, but I think it would be very daunting. I mean, I think my first um, directing experience, I would probably not want to act at all and just really concentrate on that one thing at a time. Okay. Fair but uh, I am constant. Getting back to your question, I am really concentrating on my record right now, and thinking about film and stuff in the future. What about an autobiography? That's what I'm thinking. I know you. I know you just said I'm concentrating on my music, but I'm just thinking a few years hence, and we've heard stories about some TV company writing a mini series or something oh, yeah. about your early years and all that kind of stuff. Isn't it time for for you to tell your own story? Well, and not rely on interviews like this, but actually do it the way mm. you want to do it. Well, I think I kind of do that in my songs. I kind of tell my own story. I think that maybe I would probably wait till I was much older to write like the definitive mm. autobiography of my life. Because after all, I've got so much more of my life to live. Well, you could always do volume one and then do volume two. And, oh, that's true. <laughs> and see how it works out. All right, well, I'll think about that. Oh, okay. All right, thanks. I'll write the introduction. Do you think you'll know when to stop, if indeed you ever want to stop, as far as the music is concerned? Do you think you'll think, okay, it's been very good, now let's concentrate on doing something else? Will you know? Will something inside you go, okay, time to check out here? Oh, definitely. I mean, I will always have the impulse to create something. I don't know. Um, I think writing music, you can do t till you can't think anymore um i don't think it has anything to do with your age um i i'm not sure what i'll be doing 10 years from now i very well may s say i i would like to move on and try something else in my life I, who knows you said uh, oh this is about 10 years ago you said i won't be happy till i'm as famous as god i said that yeah that doesn't sound like something i'd say but okay, well, maybe I, I maybe i did say it a really long time ago um, well, I'm happy. 
So I don't know what that means. No. I don't think it has anything to do with being famous, though. Okay. We're going to play Take a Bow, which is the next single in the UK. Mm -hmm. You've already explained why you don't want to hang out in the UK, because our press aren't particularly nice to you. Um, are we going to see you touring this album? Definitely. When? Je ne sais pas. Merci bien. <laughs> Okay, this is, uh, this is inspired by where we are, you see. This is uh, uh, Madonna from the brand new album Bed Type Stories. This is Take a Bow. Thanks very much for talking to us. Je vous en prie. The only thing I can remember is uh, Quelqu'un coupe mes tulipes, which is who cut off my tulips, and it's not very useful <laughs> really, for, for everyday conversation. That's, that's, very, that's sweet. There was, there was one thing I was going to ask you to do to um, promote this interview and to mm. promote the album. As, as it's called Bedtime Stories, I did sneak in with um, my Christopher Robin verse book and I would I wondered if you'd like to read a verse fr from here whichever one you'd like and then we'll, we'll, we'll use that to, to promote the, the album and the interview uh, All right. would that be possible? do I get to pick it up? yeah you can pick anyone you like I mean, some of them are easier than others but have, you read the, be, have you read this? I read it to my son every night Yes. you have a son? yeah three year old three? that's yeah. sweet and it's his favourite books but I just thought in terms of on air promotion it'd be quite fun to uh, Doing one, I think that would be great. Oh, this is so sweet. I like furry bear, that's cute. They might not be in the same class as... Uh, Pablo Neruda? Yeah, Pablo Neruda, him. Who is he? He's a Chilean poet. He oh. was, um... I think he was, um... He was a diplomat, and then he started writing short stories and poetry, and they're really beautiful. They're all so good. Um, which one is your son's favorite? Oh, well, he, he gets what I read him. <laughs> but uh, I like the one, um, I can't remember what it's called. Wherever I go, there's always poo, there's always poo in me. <laughs> like kind of, uh, oh, wherever I am, there's always poo, there's always poo in me. That's sweet. But, I love Winnie the Pooh. I mean, have you ever read The, um, the Zen of Pooh? Uh, I've seen it on the shelf and never got around to it. Oh, well, what's in the Zen of Pooh? Oh, well, it, you have to read it. All right, okay. It, it's actually very good. You can't just sort of summarize it briefly for me. Um, well, I mean, you know how he writes, yeah. you know, Winnie the Pooh, and you know how Winnie the Pooh has this, like, unbelievably, this sort of idiot savant point of view about life, but it really makes a lot of sense if you yeah. apply it to your... It's kind of examining that. Um, Forrest Gump before it yeah. got to Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump with fur, basically. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to probably have to read the furry bear one because it's short and sweet. Fine. Absolutely, some of them are a wee bit long. All right. <clears throat> Ready? If I were a bear, and a big bear too, I shouldn't much care if it froze or snew. I shouldn't much mind if it snowed or frizz. I'd be all fur-lined with a coat like his. For I'd have fur boots and a brown fur wrap, and brown fur knickers and a big fur cap. I'd have a fur muffle ruff to cover my jaws, and brown fur mittens on my big brown paws. With a big brown furry down up to my head, I'd sleep all the winter in a big fur bed. Bye. 
breaking my heart. Breaking heart. Hide behind your smile. All the world loves a crown. Wish you well. I cannot stay. You deserve an award for the role that you play. Say goodbye.